A 12 year old boy presents to the neurology clinic due to the history of seizures, complex partial seizures. What is meant by complex partial? When you lose consciousness, it's called complex partial. If you are having conscious intact, you call simple partial seizures. Right? The, so he has got smacking automatisms and a delayed language and the skin examination is showing the lesions. So classically it is a case of tuberous sclerosis where there are infantile spasms, complex spa partial seizures, autistic uh, abnormalities which are the associated features. Now in the mammillary body you are finding the hemorrhage which is a class in the midbrain. So it is a classical lesion of the Wernicke's Korsakov psychosis which is due to the vitamin B1 deficiency. 35 year old, first time neurological symptom of diplopia. Beautiful question. Right lateral gaze, there is a problem. Notable symptoms are uh, horizontal nystagmus, then what is the typical lesion? So, you are looking at the guy, he is able to see you. When is he looking that side, he, both eyes are moving normally. But whenever he is looking this side, that eye is unable to adapt. That is called adductor lag. And the other eye which is abducting immediately will go into nystagmus. And you call it as a internuclear ophthalmoplegia of this eye is what you need to remember. Now why does this? Give me the board. <clears throat> so why does this lesion basically occur? Let us talk. So you all know very well that you are having midbrain, pons and medulla. So typically in the midbrain you have third and fourth cranial nuclei, fifth, sixth and seventh are there in pons and eighth, ninth everything else in medulla. So if you look at the pons, the sixth cranial nucleus and the third cranial nucleus. These two are interconnected by a tract which is called MLF, medial longitudinal fasciculus. So whenever your eye is looking in this direction, this side abdescence is making it to get abducted. Same time the eye where the, the other eye is supposed to get adducted, assume that this is nose. But if the MLF is abnormal, then this eye cannot adduct. So this eye is supposed to have adductor lag. But already this eye has gone into lateral gaze. So immediately the image of the person will look like two. Subbalakshmi will look like Gajalakshmi. When you have gone to see the girl to marry. Pellichuplu. Huh? Oh, what is the reason? Because Subbalakshmi was walking that side and you have seen that side and suddenly your adductor lag is there and suddenly she got split. And your this eye which is abducting will go into uh, nystagmus. Then suddenly they will ask, how come the bridegroom, his eye is flickering like that? Then they will say, girl is so beautiful that uh, the boy is completely confused and flattened out and his eye started to uh, go into nystagmus. Oh, very nice girl. So they will try to cover up the boy's adductor lag, right? So the side where there is abnormality, where the adductor lag is there, that side MLF is abnormal and this is called internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Why do you call this internuclear ophthalmoplegia? Between the two nuclei, there is a dysenergy. That's the reason. Now you may get a doubt. This eye is having adductor lag. That can even happen if the oculomotor paralysis is there also, it can happen, no? 
Suppose the oculomotor nerve is coming from the oculomotor nucleus, right? So even if oculomotor nerve is paralyzed also, this need not adduct. So how do you say whether this adduction problem is because of internuclear ophthalmoplegia or is it because of the oculomotor palsy? How can you be able to no, here oculomotor nerve is intact, oculomotor nucleus is intact, per se it is fine. But if you are asking it to be working in concert as a teamwork with the opposite side uh, absence, it is unable to do that. But per se it is fine. So how do you know that? So typically whenever you bring the finger closer to your nose, what will happen? Your two eyes converge. So you ask the person to look at the look at the finger brought closer to the nose. Then the adduction occur normally. In him, the adduction that occur for convergence reaction is normal. But for a conjugate case, there is adductor lag. Then you will think that oh, this is because of internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Okay, got it? Yeah. So, they are definitely going to ask this question in the tomorrow's exam. So, where is the problem? The problem is there in the medial longitudinal fasciculus is what you need to remember. Now, a 45 year old woman is typically having a lesion. And uh, this is called Ballos concentric stenosis. Useless question. They won't ask such complex questions in exam. I myself came to know what is Ballos concentric stenosis after 20 years of teaching because our neurology sir who sets the questions they are very tough sir eh? we will ask them that please ask those questions those image based questions which are commonly asked in exam they, to answer them only we have a trouble on the top of it you bring Upanishads Vedanta eh? uh, kind of questions where we will answer 42 year old with relapsing remitting type of multiple sclerosis Progressive headache, confusion, flare image was being done on the MRI, which is showing a plaque. So, what is this basically due to? So, there is a JC virus reactivation which can lead to progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. So, now, uh, why did he get the JC virus infection? So he is using the monoclonal antibody natalizumab, right? So this monoclonal antibody can be responsible for the JC virus infection. So it is a humanized monoclonal antibody. Once more, you have a chimeric where the mouse and the human combined um, monoclonal antibodies are there. Once more, among monoclonal antibodies which are purely humanized, which are chimeric. That monoclonal antibody list is there. No, without that, there is no need PG. You have not read means you are not into the game at all. Deposit be nai milega agar election me gaye to. Monoclonal antibody list. What conditions it is used? It is monoclonal antibody against which receptor? So, there is no escape from that doctor. Some things which are very standard you can't do wrong. And luckily image based questions, so your common sense also is important. Only reading the alone is not much. But reading is first criteria. You should as usual like the old exam, you must be ready for single, single shooters, tequila shots kind of questions. You must be ready to answer confidently. Now, the pathology sample shown here is showing concentric calcified rings, which is typically a part of the meningioma, is what need to be remembered. So, meningothelial nests and whorls are the ones which are being shown, which are pathognomonic of uh, the meningioma. Two-year-old boy comes with a guide difficulty. His mother reports that he has a difficulty in walking, was not like the other kids. And he also has a profound dysarthria, ataxia, and uh, MRI is being shown. 
and he has got a macrocephaly that is an important clue. So that makes it uh, Alexander's disease which is a leukodystrophy because of the GFAP gene mutation. A 14 year old with single generalized convulsion and EEG is typically being shown what is the best initial treatment. So basically he has got uh, uh, the single seizure abnormal EEG with a generalized polyspiking poly spike pattern is what you are able to see. So it is a case of juvenile myoclonic epilepsy and uh, you prefer to give valproate in order to treat it. Then uh, the fetus which is being shown has got only one central part. So holopresencephaly is an incomplete separation of the two hemispheres of the cerebrum is what you need to remember. 53 year old with a right sided weakness then what is the most likely etiology responsible for this bleeding. So typically it is a bleed which is happening in the putamen which is very common in hypertension. So typically the patient is having a chronic hypertension. On electron microscopy at the neuromuscular junction the one this one is normal the other one is having a sparse receptors. So neuromuscular junction sparse receptors of acetylcholine on EM is a classical feature of the myasthenia gravis is what you need to remember. Now regarding this condition what is not true? So you should remember that it is a case of once more lysencephaly and uh, it is a problem of migration of the cells and um, um, seizures are a very common manifestation. It is due to LIS1 and DCX mutation. 6 year old has a corneal transplant, rapidly progressive dementia, cognitive decline and MRI is being obtained. So what is this most likely to be? So cognitive decline though it is not uh, um, Crookswell Jacob is not that commonly seen in our scenario but a cognitive decline after having a corneal transplant from a donor that can be a source for infection and uh, that is responsible for Crookswell's Jacob which lead to development of spongiform encephalopathy and a progressive dementia. 52 year old with memory loss for the last several weeks. MRI is being obtained and what is the it is a diffusion weighted image is being displayed. So what is the problem in this given case? So restricted diffusion in the gray matter also called as cortical ribboning. Are able to feel that there is a ribboning like appearance cortical ribboning is the classical MRI picture of the Crookswell's Jacobs disease is what you need to remember. 63 year old is having frequent history of falls in the last year. Lightheadedness is there upon standing and walking and uh, she has several episodes of syncope and uh, typically the MRI has been shown to you. So this entity is called multiple system atrophy whenever you have Parkinsonism. Parkinson plus syndromes are a group of conditions. Parkinsonism like features will be there. But in addition to that you will also have dementia added. Right? Uh, they are all called Parkinson plus syndromes. One of them is multisystem atrophy. So multisystem atrophy is a alpha synuclein neurodegenerative condition and uh, in the sixth decade it will present it will have Parkinsonism plus the autonomic dysfunction, urinary urgency, erectile dysfunction, decreased sweating, constipation etc etc associated. You heard of Scheidrager syndrome. It is once more Parkinson's with autonomic dysfunction. Combination is called Scheidrager. 50 year old with HIV, progressive headache, confusion, left hemiparesis and uh, he was in addition to corticosteroid therapy, how do you want to basically treat uh, this individual? So here you can see that there is a midline shift. 
and uh, there is a cerebral abscess. So that is the reason a neurosurgical consultation is needed for you to drain the uh, cerebral abscess is what you need to remember. Axillary freckling is being shown and uh, where do you see axillary freckling? It is seen in neurofibromatosis type 1 is what you need to remember. And in the subarachnoid space specimen, what is that which is being denoted by the arrows? So they are all the gram positive cocaine clusters which is typically a feature of streptococcus meningitis when you do CSF sample. So which tumor is this? Typically this has got a classical oligodendroglioma with round nuclei and this is called as the fried egg appearance is the classical feature that you are able to see. Now in this EEG, what is the classical finding? It is showing high amplitude slow waves which is typical of subacute sclerosing panencephalitis typical EEG pattern.